I am Hugo Barra, uh, VP of Xiaomi Global uh, here in KL. Hello, Loya Donet, everybody. Uh, my name is Bin Nin. Uh, I'm co-founder and president of Xiaomi. Uh, for the launch of uh, Mi 3, uh, which is our first product for the Malaysia market. I will start with saying that uh, we are a uh, mobile internet company. Um, and we are a company who are able to build software, uh, really high performance hardware, and internet services all three together. Uh, we call these a triathlon model uh, startups. Um, and uh, you know, me as, as it stands, uh, it's mobile internet. So we are intrinsically uh, in our blood, a mobile internet company. Uh, so first of all, I would talk about it as me, which is our brand, our international brand, uh, MI. Uh, and I think I would describe it as uh, it's a new brand uh, of you know, consumer electronics pro products, including you know, phones, now tablets, TVs, uh, that really primes for the highest quality software hardware experience. It is the most user-friendly, most customizable uh, software experience, along with incredibly high-spec hardware. So just really high-quality products that are also uh, really, really affordable. So I think the best way to think about us is we're a platform company, right? We, we, we are you know, building platforms um, for internet services uh, across multiple devices. You know, for that, you need software, right? You need operating system and apps, uh, and you also need hardware uh, for those to run on. Uh, it's actually dating all the way back uh, even before Xiaomi was founded uh, when Lei Jun and I uh, and several co-founders we sat together and discussed the future of uh, mobile internet uh, in China and also uh, around the world. Uh, you know, we started with just building a software and you could take our software and put it on anyone else's hardware. Of course, that's not something that people are you know, willing to do or even know how to do, normally speaking. So the next step, of course, was for us to actually make our own hardware. By focusing on building great software experience you know, um, on mobile phone and building really high performance device, you know, uh, the hardware uh, and the phones that we, you know, that we would like to build, and incorporated that uh, with selling directly to, to consumers via e-commerce, you know, the three things that adds up. Uh, we'll be able to give consumers a great product. That's how things come together, you know, at the very beginning, even way before Xiaomi was founded. Uh, so we've actually been shipping our own hardware for um, uh, uh, almost three years now. Uh, the first one was in August uh, of 2011. Um, so for almost three years, uh, we've been doing this. Uh, and, uh, you know, it is really a platform play. Going into hardware is just part of executing that plan uh, in, in the earlier days. Uh, we actually later, uh, make a decision to accelerate uh, going into hardware um, for a very simple reason. Where well, we're going to continue to add features to both the software side and the hardware side while at the same time building apps and cloud services to go with it. As we are making MIUI available to some of the, on some of the uh, existing handsets, we figure that uh, because the kernel level driver, the code, um, uh, it's not open source yeah, at the kernel levels. Uh, there are bugs and user experience. Uh, there are bugs that impact the user experience of, of those phones. You know when they use MIUI. So we actually, um, you know, as we are launching, you know, the, the first few versions of MIUI uh, in the early days, we figured that it's it's uh, it's important for us to build our own hardware, especially the lower layer drivers, and make those drivers work seamlessly better with the uh, with MIUI. Uh, just simply from the perspective of, of making a great user experience, you know, overall. Um, and we also, you know, as we go, as we go deeper into the uh, MIUI uh, Android software stacks, uh, we, we, stand, we even understand better that it's super hard to separate hardware and software. It has to be all intrinsically built together, you know, to make a great user experience, you know, from the product, product perspective. So we actually, and that, that's, that's, that was about the time we started to to look for co-founders who can, you know, join us uh, and build hardware. Yeah, um, I think in the uh, uh, in the earlier days, um, I would say the back 10, 20 years ago. Uh, back then, uh, China um, uh, won't uh, do not have uh, uh, the talents who can actually build world-class products. 
uh, and it's understandable. You know, the, the country went through, uh, you know, huge transformation, um, and I actually went through that myself. Uh, moving back to to to, to Beijing uh, in early year 2000, uh, still with Microsoft, um, and and at that time, most of the you know the consumer electronic companies in China are only able to put together existing you know products, uh, and then they they competing only on cost. Right, you know, they are, it's not uh, back then. You know, back 10, 15 years ago, it's they are not capable, technically capable, of building really high quality and high performance uh, 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 products. The last 10, 15 years, things have changed, and, and I've answered that myself. Um, being with Microsoft um, uh, in earlier days and then later with Google, um, the the engineers, you know, who who grown up in China, uh, went to college in China, you know, joined the multinational. Uh, and and they you know they are writing software code you know they are writing internet services, and same similar experience as Dr. Joe you know who actually came from Motorola, uh, he actually helped build the Motorola R and D center uh, in China uh, back in the in the in the early two thousands, uh, you know the engineers who joined fresh out of college you know John Motorola built great you know phones you know based on Motorola quality and standards. Um, and then, you know, after 10, 20 years, you know, China already are able to see this number of talent pools who are able to build world-class products, both from the hardware, from the software, and the and internet services. I, I'm not sure if I completely agree with uh, this sort of being a, gen, a, a, generalized, a generalized statement that you can make. Uh, I think particularly amongst the more tech-oriented crowd, who have experienced products from you know multiple companies like Huawei, Lenovo, and so on, who make really really high quality products. I think that perception doesn't isn't really as strong. Of course, you know we are here to stay, so we're here to show that our brand, uh, which happens to be Chinese, of course, uh, is uh, one to be associated with high quality. Uh, and if you look at Xiaomi today, the core R&D team, uh, consisting of mostly engineers, you know, who have 10 or 15 years of experience uh, working at Microsoft, working at Google, working at Motorola, and then later we actually see, you know, engineers from Apple, from HTC, Samsung, you know, specializing in hardware design, uh, and also, you know, Google and Facebook and Twitter, you know, international uh, internet companies, of course, you know, local in engineers who used to work at Tencent, uh, Baidu, Alibaba, you know, you know, trying to get and build Xiaomi. So if you look from inside, um, these are people and engineering talents, you know, who, who have years of experience coming, get, coming together and, you know, their vision and their mission uh, and their passion is really about building, you know, as good a products, uh, you know, uh, as they did before, you know, in these multinational companies. Right. So the last, you know, I would say the last five, ten years, uh, we have been seeing these huge talent pools uh, in China uh, who are transforming the uh, manufacturer's uh, quality assurance controls from what used to be called, you know, making China uh, over into design in China, right? And the design capabilities, both the uh, industrial design, uh, both the product design, as well as the uh, engineering design. And of course, the process, you know, uh, at the assembly line, who, are, who you know, who, who people are able to control, is much better than it used to be. So not only are we bringing really great products here, but we're also working really hard on the end-to-end -end user experience, right? From the moment when you buy a product from our website to the moment when you receive it, uh, and if you have, to, if you need any help with it, if you have to, you know, take it for a repair or anything like that, we want, we want to make sure that the entire experience is flawless. So we're working very hard to make sure that happens. We're going to be watching this market very, very closely. Um, okay, it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty uh, easy to, to do a math on, on this. Um, <clears throat> uh, if you look at the the cost of any products uh, and smartphone to begin with, um, there are several causes that goes on top before uh, Xiaomi come into the uh, into the industry. The cost of the material. Uh, you know, every single chips, every single display, every single uh, components cost money, right? So, so that, to, to, that's one cost. The second cost sitting on top would be the channel cost. When you sell the products, uh, you would have to, you know, usually we go through distribution channels, where each of the channels would take in some level of profitability. And it usually adds up to, I would say, average 20-30%. Some of the regions will be even higher. Um, and then, on top of that, you usually put in the company's marketing costs. And that's a, you know, it can go as high as billions of dollars, you know, as it, as you invest into making TV ads, you know, street ads, or any other marketing campaign that you, it, it take, it, it, you know, it, it needs money. And all these ads, all these traditional marketing, you know, costs are, are, are usually very expensive. Uh, and then you add on top of the usual profit margin, you know, for any hardware companies, 
they have to make money so any chances they sell. Uh, and that's the only way uh, companies make money if you are only to sell uh, hardware. Um, let alone all the other R&D costs, uh, let alone the touring costs um, for any OEM manufacturers to, to, to build the tool you know, that's needed to, to assemble the phone. Right? All these costs adds up. Uh, and if you're assuming like every phone that you make sells for 100,000, 200,000 units, you know, maybe even up to a million units, you take all these costs divided by the total number of units you are about to sell, you end up seeing this huge uh, 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 extra cost that goes on top of the actual material cost. Um, now, when when we think of this this whole uh, uh, stack of, of costs, uh, you take away the distribution cost, which is usually anywhere between twenty to forty percent. You take away the mar marketing cost, sometimes can run as high as ten to twenty percent. You take away the touring costs, all the initial investments that you have to put in to have the tools and assembly lines ready to make the phone. Um, and then you take away the margin <laughs> that each man manufacturer expects to make on, on a per unit basis. That's where the, the Xiaomi product is, is being priced at. Now the question will be say, you know, how can we get, get that? You know, we are running a business and you know, we, are, we are not here to do, to do a, uh, you know, a welfare. Or, you know, the, um, um, what we believe in is if we are able to build high quality and performance products at this price point, then eventually the model would would work if we sell a lot more phones than 100,000 and 200,000 units than any other OEMs are expected. And that's what we want because, you know, uh, internet companies always think of getting huge adoption of user base. The other thing that we do as well, which is very unique, uh, is we uh, leverage social media for our marketing. All of our marketing is on the internet. Uh, so we use platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Google+, uh, Weibo, and so on and so forth to get the word out uh, and to actually have the community help um, advertise uh, or, or really get the word out about our own products and that has been a very successful model uh, and people actually really appreciate it you know when you see an ad on, on TV for a, a particular product you instinctively know that if you buy that product you're actually paying for that TV ad right we don't want people uh, to feel that way um, our approach is in many ways so unique and so fresh that people are actually fascinated by it Right, so there's a number of reasons why we are here in Malaysia. You know, we started in Singapore, as you said, because it was, for us, it was sort of the easiest market to get into. Uh, it's a small market, very sophisticated logistics, the e-commerce payment system, and so on and so forth. It's also where we decided to locate our headquarters, so our people were there. It was sort of easy to get started quickly, deal with issues uh, immediately, and so on. Malaysia is the next step up. Malaysia is very sophisticated from a, an infrastructure in e-commerce and payments perspective as well. You know, users in Malaysia are very internet savvy, they're very tech savvy, uh, and they're used to buying things online. Um, uh, of course, it's a much bigger market uh, with much more, uh, you know, diverse uh, set of users, which we of course have to learn. It's also geographically much larger, right? We have to put service centers not only in one city, but uh, around the country. So we're starting with four service centers, but we're going to add more. Uh, we're also going to get uh, add some drop-off points so that if you have an issue with your product, you can find a place very near to your house where you can drop it off, uh, it'll get repaired and sent back to you, of course, if you have a problem. Um, uh, logistically speaking, uh, Malaysia is also a bit trickier, uh, but uh, there are many different carriers that actually serve uh, the entire country, so it's easy to ship something from one place to the other. Credit card adoption is reasonably high as well, so it's easy for us to collect payments online. Uh, of course, uh, Many new challenges, particularly because it's a big country. Uh, so we're ready to deal with those. Uh, and we're going to work very, very hard to make sure that our launch is very successful. Uh, the Apple of China. Well, uh, I think, first of all, I'm not sure if that's accurate because we're two very, very different companies. You know, we sort of have a very different approach to how we build products. Of course, we love the fact that Apple is, has the reputation of you know, one of the companies that builds the highest quality products with the best user experience in the world. Of course, uh, being compared to that kind of company is something that you know, we would be always honored uh, you know, uh, by without a doubt. Uh, but I think that fundamentally we're a very different company from Apple. Uh, we respect them and we admire them tremendously. Uh, but I think what we're trying to build is actually a very different kind of company. I think if you look more deeply into the Xiaomi business model, uh, it's actually very different from, from Apple. Uh, and I will just name a few. Uh, number one is uh, we are a very open company. 
versus uh, uh, I guess you know when people are looking from outside of the Apple ecosystem is is close. We are open in many sense. Right? Um, first of all, it's open source Android, uh, and and that's fully open. Uh, we are open. Uh, we are open with everybody about our business model. Uh, we are also open with even the components that we put in the phones. Completely open. Uh, we are also a, a company that are super open on taking feedbacks, uh, as I shared uh, uh, earlier. Uh, anybody who has a thought about you know what what's, what can be put into me or I, you know, this version and next version, we we'll take those feedbacks. We may not be able to do it this week or next week, uh, but it's in the pipeline. You know, we'll be ranking those uh, and then try to try to see if we can fit in more features. As we're going to more countries, we'll be doing more and more of this. Uh, we, we even, you know, as we mentioned, like the translation of Malay, uh, it's actually done by the fans, uh, by, 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 uh, you know, by the users, not us. Uh, and they they did an amazing job. Like Enron and the guys, they actually have full-time jobs, you know, um, and and they're just doing it on a part-time basis. And we we are we are getting a lot of uh, uh, engagements and participations from Malay fans. <laughs> Uh, this is actually very different from you know from Apple as, as it comes to, uh, and and this is the model that we will certainly want to adopt uh, as we go into more countries uh, and into more products. I think it's unfair to say uh, that that we are copying anyone because we we're actually doing so many new things, uh, and we are taking. Um, uh, you know, industry practices, industry standards to such a new level of polish and sophistication that I really do think that our identity, our visual and design identity is becoming very, very clear. Uh, you know, we're innovating on the chipsets and components we use, we're innovating on the materials we use, we're obviously innovating and have been for four years now on software, uh, you know, and unique ways for software and hardware to interact. So, I mean, I really do think that someone who makes that comparison should look at our products a bit more closely so they understand, you know, what we're, what we're really doing and, uh, you know, how truly and profoundly innovative we are as a company. Yes, yes, I, I, I want to bring every single product that we have uh, to Malaysia, every single one of them that we launch. Um, uh, there are physical challenges that we have to, and issues that we have to address before we actually start selling any of this. Um, uh, for instance, like for, for MePad, um, we still haven't even started selling it yet. It still goes through the beta testing. Um, but as we are exiting beta, um, we will start with the CE testing uh, and all sorts of testing you know, as quickly as we can. Um, so I want, to, I want to shorten the time when products are being made available in China and then in, in, in Malaysia. Yeah, so we're starting with Mi 3, which is our high-end device. Uh, the next device to come here will be Redmi 1S. We're actually bringing the new version of Redmi uh, to Malaysia, which has double the flash and a faster processor uh, for the same price. Uh, after that will be Redmi Note, uh, which we uh, are still in the process of getting certified and all that. Um, so it'll come probably in a couple months. The, uh, the router products also, we're actually doing CE testing right now. Uh, I think once we have finished CE testing, uh, uh, I would like to see uh, the, the Mi router products being sold in Malaysia as soon as we can. Um, the Mi Box, um, Mi Box and Mi TV, um, we need to sort, sort, so, solve the, uh, the content copyright issues. Because right now the Mi Box and Mi TV um, in, in China, people are actually be able to watch uh, online video and movies. And all these, are, all these has copyright uh, in mainland China uh, only. So uh, going beyond mainland China, we need, we need to partner with our uh, partners to provide legal content uh, on Mi TV and Mi Box in these different countries, including local content, uh, as well as China content uh, outside of China, as well as Hollywood movie content. You know, that's being made available globally. Um, so these are very complicated content deals that we have to make uh, when we have people driving this. And, and once we solve that, then, then, then the next thing that we need to solve is uh, Mi Box is easy because it's small. But for MeTV, then you're looking at logistic problems. Right? It's big, and and when you order online, you know, we, uh, in China today, we actually have people, uh, you know, uh, logistic people, you know, carrying the TV to your house and help you set it up. You know, everything's all set up, and then you can just start using it. Um, even in China, we haven't even started selling the MeTV in all cities. I think we are only selling it in ten to. 
10 to 15 cities uh, in China, simply because of logistics. We're still you know, working very hard to have the logistics coverage so, so people can order it and then we can have people actually come to the house and have it installed. Um, we need to figure out how to solve that in Malaysia uh, before we start selling. Otherwise, um, you know, the uh, users would have really, really bad experience. So all these are issues, we, you know, Hugo and the team are driving. Uh, and and to, to me, uh, I really want to see all these products start selling as soon as, soon as we can. Our goal is to bring it in, into this market as quickly as possible. Yeah, so our approach um, today is to, you know, we make a product, we design it, we test it, of course. Uh, it's ready for uh, manufacturing. We start making, we start manufacturing, and we start selling what we make as quickly as possible. We could, like other players, wait two or three months until we've made enough before we start selling. Um, we think that's not really how we should work. It's not sort of fair to our brand and to how we want to be perceived. Right? So we start selling in small batches because that's how quickly we're making. We're not accumulating pro you know, produced units before we start selling. Uh, and we're always going to be subject to capacity constraints uh, because the entire industry is subject to, capa to capacity constraints. So our model is going to be the same uh, all the time. Make and sell them as quickly as we can. Yeah, so um, uh, our, our marketing team is very interesting. They're, they're basically a bunch of you know, geeks like us uh, who love writing about technology and who love talking to people who like technology. Um, so what we have is a team that talks to our fans, our users, the way that they would talk to their friends. Uh, we love writing about technology, not only our technology, but just technology in general. You know, we post about interesting things in the industry and we ask people what they think. Uh, we're very playful in how we talk to them. And most importantly, we always um, make announcements first on social media. Our fans are always the ones to hear first. They're never going to hear something from the press or you know, from a blog or anything like that first. And maybe if there's a leak, perhaps, but they're never gonna hear, they're always gonna hear from us first, right? And people appreciate that. They know that if they stay uh, tuned to our you know, Xiaomi, Facebook, Malaysia page, for example, they're always gonna know first uh, what's going on. They really appreciate that. And that's how we've managed to really uh, sort of conquer their loyalty uh, over time. You know, the Xiaomi Malaysia page uh, on Facebook has almost 25,000 fans already, and it's only been two weeks, right? So really awesome, and we're looking forward to mo much more. Uh, so Mi 3, uh, as you said, is, an, is a 3G only de uh, device. It supports HSPA+, plus, so up to 42 megabits per second. Quite fast, of course, not quite LTE. Uh, uh, I do think that some people um, uh, are actually perfectly fine with 3G. In fact, most people are. Uh, primarily when you think about coverage uh, and so on and so forth, uh, 3G is still sort of the primary uh, uh, network for everyone here in Malaysia. Uh, we are, of course, working on LTE products. We just didn't think that it would be fair to wait, uh, uh, you know, perhaps even a few more months before we launched our products here uh, because people really wanted uh, both, you know, Mi 3 as well as uh, Redmi and, and Redmi Note. Uh, so we said, let's just launch these, market, these, these devices and as soon as we have our LTE versions ready, we'll launch those as well. Uh, so we're going to launch an initial set of accessories with all of our devices, you know, basic protective cases, uh, you know, in the case of Redmi and Redmi Note, external battery, external charger, screen protectors, all the basic, most popular accessories. And then we're going to listen to the community and see what is it that people think we should bring in here as well. So literally, we put up for vote and we see what accessories people think we should bring. Maybe a new back cover with a different color or a new, you know, sticker for Mi 3. And then we'll bring those as well. Apa kabar Malaysia? Kami Xiaomi. Dan kalau Malaysia boleh, Xiaomi pun boleh.